Hey everyone, welcome to my Cluck and Bell farm raid guide. In this video, we'll be going through all the setups as well as both versions of the finales to give you the best tips and tricks on how you can tackle the Cluck and Bell farm raid. Timestamp below if you're looking for anything specific. Let's get right into it. To start the Cluck and Bell farm raid, you just simply need to be in free roam and wait for Vincent to give you a call. This could take a couple of minutes before you get it, so don't panic if you don't get it right away as soon as you load into free mode. Once you got the phone call, make your way to the Vespucci police station and then you can start the Cluck and Bell farm raids. The first setup is very simple. All you need to do is go to the locations and then grab the cash and kill some dudes and that is pretty much it. It does vary how many locations there are based on the amount of players that are within your party. One and two players will have two locations, three players will have three locations and four players will have four locations. The mission itself will not change, it will just simply be a few more locations you have to tackle for the amount of cash that you'll need for the finale. The second setup requires you to search two areas to find a laptop and a terabyte. Both of these have random locations and I'll show all of them in the footage, starting with the laptop. The laptop can be found on the Del Perro Pier and has 11 possible spawn locations. They're not too difficult to find as they're generally highlighted by being near a clock and bell cup and the area where it spawns has been altered in some way or another. Examples of this I'll show in the footage as well, but it's pretty obvious if you're vaguely familiar with the Del Perro Pier. Luckily, as soon as you get close enough, the laptop will also be highlighted on your minimap to make finding them even easier. And for completion's sake, I'll also show a map of all the possible locations in case you are struggling still. The terabyte has a total of three possible locations, but all of them have a set spawn for each area. You can find each of these in the footage. Once you arrive, you'll be attacked by drones, which can be taken out rather easily by using an assault shotgun or a minigun. And if you're a bit of a lower rank, make sure to keep an eye on your health as multiple of these drones trying to shoot at you or maybe even shock you might actually get you killed a lot quicker than you might expect. Once the drones are down, simply get inside of the terabyte, grab the hacking device and then make your way to their cartel compound. Here you'll be met with a bunch of enemies you can easily take out with a few well-placed grenade launcher shots or some sticky bombs from the cover position shown on screen. Once those are down, simply pick up the keys and then make your way to the front of the train to start driving. The rest of the mission is fairly simple. All you need to do is just simply drive the train, hack some traffic lights and then keep an eye on your health. There's no real need to shoot at enemies at all here. Just keep snacking until you made it to the tunnel and you should be totally fine. In the third setup, you'll be given three different locations, A, B, and C. Each of these locations have a different loadout associated with them. Location A has the compact rifle, combat pistol, mini SMG, crowbar, and molotovs. Location B has the heavy rifle, tactical SMG, heavy shotgun, and pipe bombs. And location C has the MG, AP pistol, combat shotgun, and the grenades. You are able to get every single loadout within this setup if you choose to do so, but there's very little point in doing so. By far the best location to go to is location B. It has the best loadout and by far the least amount of enemies. The only downside to it is that you have to use the jet ski park at the beach in order to get to the yacht. Please also pay attention to this footage for a quick shortcut to get up to the second floor of the yacht for a quick getaway to speed up the process. And in case you are wondering, the helicopter that's following you afterwards doesn't really pose much of a threat so you can just simply ignore it. When you arrive at Vincent, you will have to send him a text to confirm which load that you want to use. But if you accidentally selected the wrong one, don't worry, you can switch to a different one during the finale if you happen to grab multiple loadouts. 
The fourth setup will have you do the same as in the third setup, but this time you'll have to get a getaway vehicle. Each of the three locations will have three possible vehicles that will spawn. Location A has the Tulip, Moonbeam Custom and Impaler LX. Location B has the Juggler, Sergoi and Raiden. And location C has the Patriot Millspec, Terminus and the Squaddy. There is a catch however. If you go to the same group as you did for the weapon loadout, you will face heavier resistance. But from what I could tell, all it seemed to be is just a couple of extra cars spawning when you get near, so it doesn't really matter. The best location, once again, is location B, relatively close and by far the best chance of a decent vehicle. Especially location C is just one to avoid altogether. I had four buzzards spawn and then I just also had to shoot down the cargo bob that was carrying the car itself. I mean, I'm good! Once you deliver the car at Vincent, you'll have to select the car again by texting Vincent that you want to use in the finale. You are able to grab and deliver the two other cars as well for some extra money, but from what I could tell, this will only give you $5,000 per car, so it definitely is not worth your time. The fifth and final setup will determine whether you'll be doing the finale in stealth or if you'll be going loud. The first section with the fans, you can just shoot to your heart's content with no issues whatsoever. If you want to make your life a little bit easier, I recommend bringing some FMJ rounds to easily shoot out the drivers and also the passenger in order to make the van stop as you're hacking it. You don't have to worry about them shooting up too much as long as you stay behind, but I guess it makes life a little bit easier because it prevents them from driving away quicker. As soon as you kill both of these guys, by the way, they will also be dropping an outfit, making the stealth section of this mission just a little bit easier as well. Once you hacked both of the vans, you'll be shown a location where you have to go to, where the most important part of the entire setups will begin. The stealth section in this is pretty straightforward. The enemies in here are pretty much oblivious to people being shot or anything happening in their surrounding area. And even shooting them right next to each other will not really alert the enemies if you are relatively quick enough. One thing that is important to do here though is to take out the camera so it cannot spawn any dead bodies. And also make sure that you sabotage the delivery trucks and not blow them up. And one final thing is what we're gonna get into in just a second. So making our way to this room over here after we grab the drill there to take down the entirety of the CCTV altogether. Doing so will allow you to complete the finale in completely stealth. Not disabling the CCTV will immediately trigger the aggressive approach as soon as you leave. So make sure to do that and not forget that or else you will be doing the finale aggressive. With that said, you want to finally take out these final two in the hall and then make your way to the room to our right. Kind of hug the door here, take out this guy and then go around the corner and pop the other guy in the head as well. Then you want to go to the other room and do the exact same thing, but they're going to be looking at each other. So you have to be a little bit quicker here, but generally speaking, should be fine with two quick headshots. As soon as it's time to start drilling, it is very important to know that the moment that you even press the trigger to start doing the drilling, immediately two enemies will spawn. So make your way to the other side of the room and wait for the enemy to come in and then shoot him in the head. Then you want to do the exact same thing in the other room. And once those two are down, you have completely done this stealth and you can just keep on drilling until you have acquired the key card that you need. Drilling any more than just for the key card is completely pointless because each of these locker boxes have about $500 which will result into like $4,000 in total that you'll be walking away with. A complete and utter waste of time unless you are broker than broke. But if you just so happen to fail the stealth and enemies are alerted, do not fear. They will have a meter show up at the bottom right of your screen, indicating the amount of time that you have in order to take out the remaining enemies in the area. This does also mean that you can literally go in guns blazing and just as long as you kill every single enemy in time and wipe out the SCCTV footage, as well as not blow up any of the trucks, you'll still meet the stealth requirements and you will be able to do the 
finale in stealth. But generally speaking, it is probably a better idea to just try to do it the way that I showed you earlier. But if you're also unable to kill all the enemies in the given amount of time, you can also restart the checkpoint by getting yourself killed or blowing yourself up because you'll be starting from the very start of this section and starting with a clean slate, allowing you to do the entire section in stealth once again and be able to get the stealth finale. As for the aggressive approach, honestly, the easiest way to go about getting the aggressive approach for the finale is by simply blowing up the trucks because they will instantly trigger the aggressive approach for the finale as soon as you leave the lockup here. And thus we arrive at the finale. We're starting off with the stealth version of it and showing you where you can find the loadouts if you had any additional ones. Simply shoot down the electronical box and the shutter door will open and you'll be able to find your weapons loadouts on top of the trash here. You can also re-up on ammo if you have any desire of doing so, but I don't think that you will need to, considering that we'll be going for nothing but headshots. As for the finale itself, we want to start off by taking a guy that is right in front of us and ignoring the two guys to our right and shoot down the electronic box again to just open the shutter door and wait for the guy that will be right behind it. He'll be walking towards you, so make sure to shoot him in the head right away, but then quickly make your way to the guy to the right before he has a chance to spot what happened and alert the other guards. The next three guys are easy picking, so just simply pick them off with some headshots and then move on to the next group of enemies. The guy on the left again easy picking so just shoot him whenever you want to but with the next one you kind of want to wait until he goes from right to left in order to make sure that your bullets might not accidentally graze any of the enemies that are at the far end of the hall there these two enemies will start walking if you get too close so what you can do here is pick them off from a distance or if you're not too confident in your shot or you're playing on console and you need to lock on to really work there then you can possibly just kind of wait and make them just go to the next room this is not really a big deal because all it really does is have those two enemies to simply move to a next room instead i'll show you the footage of how to take care of those two but generally speaking it's really not big of a deal it's just more of a convenience if anything whether you take out those two guards or not, this guy will always be standing in this room, so make sure to take him out before you make your way to the first storage area. Inside here we're finding one more guard, so make sure to take him out before you move on to getting the baking soda. Once outside, you want to make your way to the next room, where to your right there will be two enemies waiting to be taken out. Then make your way to the second storage area, with once again two more enemies to take out. Inside of this room, you have to find a crowbar in order to be able to open the crates. If you happen to have loadout A, you already have a crowbar equipped in your loadout, so you don't really have to look for them. Regardless, there's two locations of them. Both of them will be shown on screen for your convenience. And one neat thing that I noticed that each side will have one brick of baking soda. So if you grab one on the one side, you can move on to the other. When you're done grabbing your baking soda, you can start making your way towards the office. But do be careful and keep an eye on your radar because there will be an enemy coming your way. So patiently wait until he shows up, shoot him in the head and then move on to the next room. From there, you'll probably be able to see another enemy to your right here standing in the hallway. So make sure to take him out before you do anything else. There's two different locations for the office key. On this table where I just grabbed it right there and also a little bit further back where we just passed which I'll show on the screen as well. Once you got the office key, you can make your way to the office itself and then take out the two guards that are nearby. It doesn't really matter in what order you take out these guards, just as long as they're not directly next to each other, it should be totally fine. You do want to make sure to grab those office keys though, because if you're just going to simply shoot out the lock, the alarms will immediately be raised and the stealth mission will be failed. Once you're done hacking the office computer, you'll be given the hacking device. The minigame in this is very straightforward. What you need to do is fail the right direction for the device to start turning blue. As the blue lines go higher and higher, you'll be closer to the computer that you need to be for the safe code. The order of these is always going to be random, so it simply comes down to just searching the four computers inside of the area, and I'll show all of them so you know where to look for. Simply keep looking on your device, and as soon as you're close enough, it will blink green, and you'll be given one of these safe codes. Rinse and repeat two more times, and you'll have the safe code to open the safe. 
When you're back at the safe, make sure to have a look at your hacking device again, which will show you the safe code that you need to enter into the safe. Then you'll be able to unlock it, grab your loot, and be able to finally get out of the chicken factory. From the office, take a ride and destroy the fuse box to open the shutter doors. From there, you want to take a ride and follow what I'm doing on screen and make sure to take out every single guard that I'm taking out as well. If you don't, then one of them is likely going to spot you because you either get too close or you're in their cone of vision. Especially the guard that I'm going to shoot in just a second on the right there because you think you might be safe, but you probably aren't. Once you got the getaway vehicle, hop on the train tracks and keep following those, but make sure to keep an eye on the guard on the left there and give him a quick headshot so to avoid getting cops on you. Yes, Rockstar indeed figured out that all of us are going to be using the train tracks to make our getaway and decided to put one singular guard there. Yes, quite funny indeed. When we're making our escape, keep a close eye on your minimap because sometimes you will see a police car or two which you obviously want to avoid. A good practice here would be to try to stick to off-roading as much as you can, but in order to speed up your time just a little bit and if you're good enough at paying attention to your minimap, a quick route to make your way back to Vincent's lockup is by following the route that I'm showing you on screen. Aside from that, it really is all about just making your way back to Vincent's, keep following the yellow line on your minimap, and you will have successfully completed the Clock and Bell farm raid. As for the aggressive finale, there isn't really a whole lot here that really changes. The only thing that really changes here is that you have like one or two enemies respawning from time to time during the section where you try to get the save codes. Aside from that, I couldn't really notice much of a difference at all, considering that the amount of enemies did not change, as as well as how hard they really hit. You're pretty decently protected with the gear that you get during the prep mission, so I wouldn't worry too much about it as long as you are a decent shot and you bring enough snacks and armor for the mission itself. Just make sure to keep a close eye on your minimap to see enemies spawning in and see where they're coming from. Utilize cover, snacks and armor like I mentioned before, and you should honestly be fine. It's not that difficult at all. It's definitely not on the level of doomsday or like aggressive casino heist or anything along those lines. It's a fairly straightforward relatively easy mission on aggressive so just take your time if you're not too confident and you should be totally fine regardless that is it for this video thank you also very much for watching leave a like if you enjoyed or found it useful subscribe for more and become a member like chloe gta plus notorious jam dan and the crystal thank you for watching and i'll see you all later